Dustin. How are you doing? How are you doing, Dustin? Dustin, how's it going? How's it going? Did you get my fix? Yeah. We've had a fantastic season, so everything is recruited very well. We're going to fly tomorrow morning. I think okay. have a look, but just from the guys on the ground, there seem to be a lot out that way, sort of yeah. in the northeastern corner. There's yeah. a lot of grass there. Yeah. And the grass is also a bit too thick to make it comfortable for the predators. We start there tomorrow. You yeah. fly there tomorrow. We just have a fly yeah. there. Yeah. 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 There's another area right in the western corner. Okay. Close at the mountains. A lot of impalas and, okay, and so zebras we'll in that area. Okay, let's go. Okay. okay. Mm. Excellent. Good Brilliant. Luck. At dawn, Emma rushes over with her veterinarian's case so as not to keep the team waiting. As usual, Sean and his men leave very early before the powerful African heat arrives and compromises the animal's capture. Ross, ignoring the lions, travels around on motorcycle only. He has an appointment with John to fly over the reserve and check out the number of zebras and impalas which have to be displaced. The Makalali Reserve covers 23,000 hectares, sheltering about 3,000 animals of all species. It is near the famous Kruger National Park in South Africa. John observes the region's very thick bushveld. It's not going to be easy for him to lead the animals towards the trap. He has to succeed, however, in spite of the predators. There are presently more than a thousand impalas and about 400 zebras, much more than the reserve can handle. The entire team, well, almost, sets up the canvas Boma, a trap enabling the capture of groups of animals. Capturing them is vital to the ecological balance. And what they forget is that the land is what sustains all the animals. So we try and maintain a balance between the animals and the land to make sure that, um, you know, we can be doing this in 10 years' time without, without destroying the habitat. It comes down like this and then across. And then John and Ross establish their strategy by gathering up the first group of zebras. How far is that? From that fence to the from, from, workshop? From there to the yeah. workshop, probably about 4 k. So I can bring animals all yes, the way yes, down yes. to the workshop. Uh, we're going to go and look for small family groups of zebra, seven, eight, if maybe not more than eight or ten uh, at a time, and try and get 20 today for the truck for a customer who needs 20. Thank you for that. The entire team is wary of zebras since they bite and kick hard. And with a baby zebra amongst them, Sean is even more wary. Hey, Matt, just have a look at this. It looks like an old cut. We must just give a penicillin then, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Hey! The baby zebra is in danger. Sean has to get hold of it quickly before it's killed by the group. Someone take the radio. Take the radio. Blindfold. Yeah, come on, baby. Hey, hey, this is mother. This is mother. Hit it, hit it. On the nose. OK. Take it and take it outside, quickly. Sean alerts his friend Louise to come and pick up the baby in the truck. John is worried. He hopes she can save it at her orphanage. Emma! 
Before transporting zebras, it's imperative to calm them down, since they can do a lot of harm to the team as well as to themselves. Yeah, we're just giving all of them a tranquilizer, a tranquilizer. So we're going to wait a few minutes for that to work before thinking about loading them up. As John gathers the zebras together, Sean and Emma separate them for the journey. From the outside, Longboy and the other men manipulate the system of doors which separates the truck into compartments. A second baby zebra has been isolated. For Sean, Longboy, Stephen and the rest of the team, the hardest part is yet to come, catching the young animals and putting them outside as they wait for Louise to arrive. In spite of their size, young zebras have extraordinary strength. Yes! Yes! Hey! Is it okay? Now check the check the zebra. Is it okay? Man! Twist it, twist it, twist it. Okay, I'm good. Watch out, this one's biting a lot, eh? Okay, put it standard up. Let me see, let me see. In spite of the five men gripping it, the young zebra gets away and causes some damage. Louise finally arrives at the boma to take the young zebras away. The animals are too small. They don't survive the translocation and the subsequent uh, change in habitat. Because the first thing that would happen if you offload the group um, on the next farm is that the mother and the group will actually discard the baby. So uh, if it doesn't get trampled to death in the truck, it basically dies after offloading on the other side by getting separated from the, the breeding group. Because if they're too small, they just don't make it. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I'm just waiting for Emma. Um, we're going to give these some antibiotics. And the one's got a small cut on its back leg, which we just want to clean up before we, we load it into the box. Is that cut or am? Okay. Emma just wants to clean that one. Just go forward a bit more. It's just a small cut on the leg, very small, but I just want to clean it up with some antiseptic so it doesn't get infected. But they're both getting some antibiotic as well. The final difficulty is placing the animals into the transport container. <laughs> Not like anyone panicked. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately this one got kicked in the boma and it's a bit small to send with the rest of the group. And Louise runs an orphanage here, so we're gonna, we've taken it out. We've now tranquilized it and she'll hand raise it on the farm. And when it's old enough, she's got a, a game farm there where it'll be released onto the felt. He'll be shaking his head if it's sore. No, he's fine, he's just, he's just still. Louise, along with Emma, leave the reserve with the first young zebra. They travel the few kilometers which separate them from the orphanage.
Good enough. She's fine. She's fine. She had a good trip there. And she's nicely sedated. So Louise is just going to get the pen ready and we're just going to unload her into the pen. Yeah, the pen, the little one's just going to go into this pen, which is great because it's nice and dark. Plenty of bedding and she's also got a heat lamp as well. So we can keep her nice and quiet for a few hours to get over the, the shock. You can see. All of Emma's friends are waiting patiently for the newcomer, whom they hope will become a friend as well. A heating lamp reflects its red light, comforting the young zebra, who eventually calms down. Emma is moved by Louise's work and is reassured as far as the fate of the young zebra is concerned. Now Louise has just been showing us around her enclosure and these are the two zebras which hopefully the one we caught today will be introduced to these two so they can teach the little one how to behave like a zebra. And she'll probably be in the pen for a couple of days, one to two days. days. Yeah, just so she can calm down and warm up and get fed and then she'll come into this pen with these two and behave like a zebra. A great number of animals of all species, like this young kudu, are saved every year thanks to Louise's maternal patience. Her generosity is the best possible therapy they can receive. The team has moved the Boma to the northeast of the reserve to capture the Impalas. Sean finishes setting up the towing vehicle of the truck at the end of the track. They, they remove the rocks because when the animals come around the Boma, those rocks are in the way and they'll break their legs. If you look on the side of the Boma, You'll see we removed a whole lot yesterday. We're just clearing a path for them to run through and, and taking out any dangerous part for their for broken legs or to, to hurt the animal, for the animal's welfare. What are you going to catch now, Sean? Impala. Um, John's got a group now, maybe about 20 to 30, and he's bringing them now. Just leave one or two guys on first gate just to watch that that other one doesn't get out, eh? Long boy Stevens and the others, barely visible behind the shrubbery, wait patiently for John to finish gathering up the impalas. We have to go and check it just now. Have they gone by? Yeah, he's just trying to take them around. Because they can see the plastic there. Uh, fuck up! He doesn't sound happy. You see that kind of chemical? Eh? It's no good. So please, you get everybody and you pack this properly. All right? And that one. They haven't packed the camouflage properly in this. I can just see plastic, even from the air, I can just see a big bundle of plastic, and that's what the animals see. I think the wind's also a, a big factor, but I mean, that's inexcusable, that, that lack of camouflage. We should have checked it before then. Yeah, I'm going to go. 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 I'm going to
Oh. Mamanjo Menza and you change your foot. This time, the boma has been so well camouflaged that even John can't find it. We got everything in. I lost the boma completely. <laughs> John didn't even know where the boma was. He was flying into sun, and then he suddenly looked around, and all the boma was behind it. It's like he blew the gates. <laughs> In this reserve, groups of impalas consist of one male for 20 or 30 females. In such situations, it's common for the males to try to attack the females, and they therefore have to be controlled first. This time, the entire team will have to work fast to complete the capture. Emma and John inject the tranquilizer into the males so that they don't go after the females during the next group transport. Yeah. Yeah, he's a big ram, we've just taken him out. Yeah. Otherwise what happens, he'll fight with the females and he'll warn them. We just tranquilize them, we're putting pipes on. Once the pipes are secure, we put them back in with the female. Once the pipes are cut to the right length, Sean can release the animal. Be very careful of females don't jump off, eh? Okay. And that's it for the morning. Showing how versatile chopper pilots and vets are. We can cook as well. <laughs> the team takes a well deserved rest. Ross has received news about the location of the male impalas, a site John has been looking for in vain from the outset. Uh, Ross, yeah, we're struggling here in this corner. We're here now. Huh? Mm. Where do you suggest we go and have a look? Well, one of the guys out this morning says he saw quite a good concentration of game in this area. So it's further east. Okay, so that's that way. Huh? All right, near the river there. Yeah, all along the river. John and Sean have just been up in the helicopter to have a look for some more animals. Um, they're having difficulty spotting them either because of the vegetation or because they're not there. Uh, so John's just gone up to have another look. Just 
found a group of polar rats, so we're going to quickly try to catch them. Okay, we've got a group of about four to five from parlor male, males coming through. Um, obviously, as soon as they get in, they might start fighting, so we've got to be very quick and pipe them and tranquilize them. And it sounds as if he's up at main gate now. Just have to get ready. The team finally manages to tranquilize all the males and cover their horns. One by one, Arnold and his team separate them in the truck. Sean? Oh, great, we've got a nice big group of impala rams which we've been struggling to catch the whole time. And there were one or two little horn injuries on the leg which are just subcut, which Emma looked at and fixed. Um, but the, all of them are, are, are fine. It's quite a few big ones there. <laughs> Sean and his team have captured 86 zebras and 339 impalas, about a quarter of the population of each of the species. The animals will now be taken to new reserves, a few kilometers from Makalali. For each reserve, Sean and his team have formed groups of females with male reproducers to facilitate their assimilation. Excellent. Thanks to the work of Sean and his team, all the zebras and impalas have been moved with no problem. The national parks and reserves are thus enriched with new species every year, giving South Africa the opportunity to once again be a land of abundance for wild fauna.